Welcome! Today is Democracy in America, Volume 1. Alexis de Tocqueville. Tocqueville, this is kind of interesting, actually lived at the same time and was involved in government with Bastiat. And you can learn more about him on his author bio, but he was interested, he was an aristocrat, and he was interested in actually the penal system, and he got permission to come to America and study our penal system. And um, he got over here, and he was just fascinated by everything about America. Now, <clears throat> when I was first, this is one of those books that you've heard about, but you probably haven't read, and you don't know if you ever want to read it, and if you try to start it's long and painful if you get the if you get the volume one and volume two it's big old fat thing this is just volume one and the font is small and it's still you know i don't know 400 something pages 450 pages so it's it's long and painful for that reason a lot of people haven't read it it gets bogged down now volume two which there's also a review on but volume two is um, more often read. Because what he does is, in volume one, he goes through the government and he spends a lot of time on government and that's just not usually nearly as interesting to people. And then in volume two, and he goes through some of the cultural elements, but in volume two is when he really goes through American culture. And that's when you have all the great quotes about the greatness of women is what makes America great and um, talks about families and the arts and all that kind of stuff. But volume one, this is one of my favorite things about Tocqueville, is this idea, now, when, when I was first introduced to it and, and encouraged to read it, I was told that, because Americans think that Democracy in America, that's a complimentary title, and I was told, oh no, that's a derogatory title. Well, actually, neither is true. The truth about Democracy in America is it's, he's attempting to be very analytical. He does draw some conclusions. He does state his opinion. But it's really directed towards a French audience and when he makes comparisons they're usually between America and France. And um, he's trying to help the French... His idea, and it's really fascinating, is that there's a God, he believes in God, and he says that the idea of democracy, which fundamentally for him means two things. It means that it means the idea of the sovereignty of the people, so that uh, this kind of new idea in the history of mankind that men should create their own governments, and that's gone on in America, and Fran France had its own revolution and gone through that experience up to this time. This was published in 1830, 34, 33, no, 35. He writes it 33, 34, and it's published in 35. And it actually didn't have much of a reception, and then John Stuart Mill wrote a review on it, and then people started to buy it up. But anyway, so this idea of sovereignty of the people, it's been bubbling in, in Europe for a long, long time. There's been reformations, there's been enlightenments, there's been um, the, you know, Magna Carta, uh, Sir Edward Coke, just the whole thing, right? And, um, and so what he's trying to show is that the idea of democracy, that government should come from the people, is new in world history, and he believes it's because God wants it, and that God's moving it forward, and that democracy is going to sweep the world. And so what he's trying to do is analyze what that means. Now, the second element of, of democracy is that men are equal that regardless of race, regardless of, of education, and, and, an, and an interesting one to compare and contrast this one with is the, is the Virginian. You can look at that book review, um, and you could also read it alongside some of Democracy in America and compare what this idea of equality is. But um, So what Tocqueville is saying is, democracy is going to take over the world, and so I want to analyze it, and I want to decide what are the good and bad points about democracy as compared to other societal forms like aristocracy? 
He's kind of still French aristocracy, even though they killed him all off, there's still kind of this upper class kind of a thing. And he's really contrasting, well, how, what kind, how are the people different when they grow up with this idea that all men are equal? There's a little bit of a dichotomy here, and he touches on that, and that is the fact that what, when he's in America and when he's making this analysis, there's still slavery going on. So all men aren't equal in America, but he focuses on the North. He feels like they have the better governmental forms and that they have the better societal forms. And so, um, so but he touches on that. He, he explains this, this dichotomy that's in America when, in, in, in relationship to the Indians and to, and to the Blacks. So he wants to analyze what, he kind of wants to say, these are the characteristics of democracy in regards to people being sovereign and people being equal because it's kind of a new thing. And what does it mean in America? And what does that mean for France? And what does it mean for the rest of the world? And he says, democracy is just sweeping across the world and eventually every nation will be democratic. And so we need to understand it better and it's good and it's bad. That's why it's, 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 it, he praises America sometimes and he talks about the bad points sometimes. This is one of the elements that I love in his preface, his author's preface to the 12th edition. It's short. Um, he says, you know, since it's been published, this, that, and the other thing, he says, the, he, here, here again he's saying, the gradual development of the principle of equality is a providential fact. There's a God, providence wants democracy to move forward across the world. And that's what it's doing. Really kind of an interesting idea. And then he says, he goes on to give a little bit of an assessment, and then he says, the principle of the sovereignty of the people in America has done all these wonderful things for them, and they've remained at peace. And um, the republic, because France is a republic, right, at this point, but he He's contrasting France with America. He says the Republic there in America has not been the assailant, but the guardian of all vested rights. The property of individuals has had better guarantees there than in any other country of the world. Anarchy has there been as unknown as despotism. But then he goes on, and this is one of my favorite things he says in any of the books. He does talk about principles a lot. He brings up that word, of course, uh, temperaments too. We're all about principles. But he says this, let us look there less to find examples than instruction. Let us look to America, not to copy her, he says, not in servile copy of her institutions. Let us borrow from her the principles rather than the details of her laws. In other words, there's got to be a French way of, being of having a democratic republic, of being free, that there are principles that make people have the, the, the greatest opportunities, and America is doing a really great job of that, and so let's try to learn from her. So what we're recommending here, and uh, I'm going to try really hard to link it on this blog, on this post for you, my two favorite things I think you should read from Volume 1, and we'll have recommendations from Volume 2 as well, is Chapter 2, Origin of the Anglo-Americans. And you may not, it's, it's not very long, in my book, it's only um, 20 pages. And some of my very favorite quotes from Tocqueville are when he talks about the origins of the North and the South and the different characteristics and the people that shaped um, America from very early on. And he says that the birth and upbringing of any individual shows you where their life ends up, and the same is true for nations. And then the very last chapter, 18, the three races in the... Well, okay, 17... You might probably want to read because um, causes which maintain democracy, that's all of his conclusions. So if you just read 17 and it's longer, it's, um, let me see, it's going to be 40 pages. So it's a little bit longer, but it's all his conclusions. He does a really good recap of everything that he said, and so if you read... Um, chapter 2, which is really short and really awesome, and then you read 17, um, the causes which maintain democracy, 
you're going to get a good overview of what it's about and feel kind of like you got a taste for Tocqueville and you understand him a little bit. And that's 60 pages. That's it. And it's a little bit harder to read, but it's a great, great one for discussion. And if you look at the author review too, and you talk about the time period, it's really, um, really great for a book group to, to get a little bit of harder stuff and to do a little bit on government without like really having brain fry. But the last chapter is very worth reading too. So if you're up for it, or maybe you could do it two months in a row, the last chapter is 100 pages. It's the present and probable future condition of the three races that inhabit the territory of the United States. And so he goes through and talks about the slave class, talks about the blacks, and he talks about the Indians. And he has some really interesting things to say. Really, really great discussion. What you could do, and some of this is kind of done for you in the book groups program for government and economics. And, um, and so, you know, you, you can have a whole, a whole outline of how that, to do that really well if you sign up for that program with your book group. But just one little short recommendation here is you could read this last chapter and then you could, um, then you could read something on slavery, like you could read a Frederick Douglass alongside it, or um, you could read the Roger Williams book, the selections that we have for you on his, uh, Liberty of Conscience there. You could, th there's, there's all kinds of things that you could do to better understand this, this situation that was going on in America. You could, you could read it alongside a novel, you could do, um, Uncle Tom's Cabin, for example, any of those. Anyway, um, it, it's, it's chunky, it's 100 pages. Maybe the first half of it is probably where the better information is, I think. Read the first half of chapter 18. That would give you maybe 100 pages total to read out of Tocqueville for a book discussion. Anyway, Democracy in America, really, it's a, it's a staple. It's one of those great books that everybody's heard about but nobody's read. So here you could just read just, just a little tiny bit and just kind of cheat and have a little bit of understanding of Tocqueville and say, yeah, I've read some Democracy in America and I know what that's about. And, you know, uh, have a better understanding of why he wrote what he wrote, why it's important to American history. Anyway, um, we'll see you next time.